most amenable student. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I haven't worked with Sergey for two fights now. And uh, of course, one was when uh, he and Danny boxed each other. Uh, the second one was the Kofi fight. Uh, we're going to get back to uh, our basics and uh, get back to our circle defense, which is very effective for Sergey. And uh, he's going to follow through just the way I want him to. And I expect him to be victorious in the box. Let me ask you something. We can take it back to Yellow briefly. Like how do you think Danny did against Canelo, and, and, and what would you want Sergey to do different than Danny that he would get the win? Well, basically, uh, when it comes to Canelo Alvarez, uh, the modus operandi is keep him off balance, push him back, make him uncomfortable. If you don't make him uncomfortable, he becomes braver and braver, he starts to attack more, and he limits your capabilities. What I will do with, with Sergey is I'm going to make sure that he is that unstoppable force. He's not going to be backing up. He'll be driving forward and working in a, a circular pattern. And um, that, with, the, with his, uh, his punch stats, uh, he stays busy. He's a busy fighter. Uh, but he'll be a, a much sharper fighter. And uh, I think that will garner him the victory. Would you consider bringing Danny in camp with Sergey? Is that, you know, to help him prepare, given the fact that Danny just... No, it, it wouldn't make sense. Got you. I, I bring Curtis in the camp okay. uh, with, with Sergey for a Canelo fight. Banger. Exactly. Somebody <laughs> that can punch. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he shook him. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. We had to fight. It's cool, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I guess the biggest question we all both have is how mentally how do you fix things in terms of... A Canelo fight's a whole different thing. It is part rock concert part, you know, uh, Republican primary part boxing match. He, he's just this force that takes over. How do you get a fighter to ignore the fact that judges will be moved by him, the crowd will go crazy if he sneezes. He's almost fighting three different people, the judges, the crowd, and the fighter. Sure so. Well, see, these are the things you have to realize. Um, every time I go into a fight, uh, I'm back, I've been asked this question time and time again. Uh, are you nervous? Uh, do you uh, get jitters? No. I was that way when all of my guys were junior Olympic fighters, mm -hmm. and I had to make sure they came home without being hurt or their mothers and fathers would have a heart attack. But as professionals, it's your job to please the public and to win your fight. Mm -hmm. I have nothing to be nervous about when it comes to that. I expect for you to give me your very all. And when you do that, you will be victorious. So, no, I'm never nervous. I don't worry about it, and I'm going to instill that in my athletes. Don't worry about the event. Make sure you go on to the victory. And you do that by working as hard as you can and controlling that environment and that ring. Did Canelo's chin surprise you? Those, those uh, I think it was like three left hooks Danny gave him in a row. No, was like, no. He, he, He's a, he, I mean, Golovkin is one of the biggest punches in the middleweight division, and he never shook him. So uh, I know the kid could take a punch. Mm -hmm. I wasn't worried about that. Attrition wasn't the issue. It was making sure that you kept scoring and you kept him off balance. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal. Did you think Danny ever got him with his it shot? Like It was one time he, he really uh, had Canelo notice what he could do. Mm -hmm. And I believe that was in the, the, the eighth or the ninth round. It was a really big shot and uh, it got his attention big time. But you can't, you have to follow through. I don't care how big a puncher you are. You have to follow through. If I hit you with one big shot, don't think I'm just going to rejoice and, and glamorize that punch. I'm going <laughs> to advance and keep the pressure on mm -hmm. and continually break you as I go through it. So... Uh, repetitive attacks is is how you keep a guy off balance and has a great chance. With Sergey's style, and we've seen Danny's style, we see Danny defeat Sergey extremely well, and we've seen Danny have a little bit of difficulty with Canelo. How can we figure that Sergey will have um, some, some form of success with well, Canelo? Well, you had to realize that um, once again, he wasn't utilizing yeah. his circle defense. Okay. Um, and there were there were key factors. Sergey is one of my students that is 
very focused when we're working together. Balance down the street. If, if you, if you if just look at the fights when yeah. we're together and we're not together, you'll see that. Uh -huh. And um, it, it will be a different story when he's in the ring with Canelo because I'm going to guide him correctly. Okay. When you were in that uh, fight with Officer Tony, did you see any kinks in his armor? That, you know, in Canelo? Yes. I saw a few. I saw a few. I, I won't mention them now because <laughs> I know my words seem to, to go verbatim in there. This is what he said. <laughs> so I'm just going to say I see, I've see i seen some uh, flaws that we can exploit and we will exploit. Did we talk about the, the Marshall Huck fight that happened the other day? Um, you know, obviously, it, it seemed like it was in his favor. It was a little controversy with the. Yes, it, it was a. I mean, Marco is uh, is a heavyweight now, and um, the first shot he, he he clipped his opponent with dropped him. Now, the the ensuing combination, which was a beautiful one at that, a right hand hook, right hand, put him on Queer Street again. I don't know um, at that point when the referee was in a position uh, and he said break, but he was behind them and they were in full motion. Um, it ended up being a no contest, but I needed to see what I was working with with Mark. Um, we didn't have a lot of sparring because it was just so quick how this thing happened. And um, he's still picking up my, my technique. Uh, and that's going to take a moment. But he showed me that he is vicious in the ring. There's no Mr. Nice Guy about Marco Huck. Mm -hmm. I saw that firsthand. And I love that part. There's no no nice guy in boxing. Yeah. After we finish fighting, hey, you can hug, kiss, whatever the heck you want to do. But yeah. when it's fight time, it's time to fight. And Marco comes to fight. So there's some things we need to work on. And we will. But I see what I have to work with. And I'm very happy with that. At 168, where is the, is the goal to go for Danny? To go directly after the title or to kind of work your way into the division? No, you have to work your way into the division, get acclimated to it, and, and it's a new place for him to be, so it'll be one step at a time. Gotcha. Is that the absolute next step, though? No more 160 for sure? Um, I very truly doubt he'll be 160. Okay. How's he doing? He's doing okay. You know, he lost a very big fight. Yeah. So he's not, it's not like he's in Disney World saying, oh, let's go for rides. But um, these are things he has to reflect upon yeah. because I felt that Danny could have won the fight by just being a little bit more Danny. Got you. So you you don't get to that point and not be who, who you, you are. are. Got you. And yeah. um, when he sees that, he might turn around and kick himself in the butt. Yeah. I hate to say it, but it's Danny too nice, like Michael Corrin, in terms of, this has now been the third fight where, you know, you and I have talked to this big concern, but it's a lucky fight, you want him to jump on Slucky, right. lets him go. Sergey, same thing, he lets him go. Canelo, he sort of lets him go. The only time he's really been the story is when guys attack. Is, is there any way you can teach him to be more of that seek and destroy fighter, or is he just too much of a gentleman to be that well, nasty person? You can't, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to say. Uh, make someone, a, it's a nature thing. Um, some of the best knockout fighters in the history of boxing have been really mean people. <laughs> Literally, um, Mike Tyson. Sonny uh, Liston. Sonny, Sonny Liston. Of, <laughs> I mean, um, George Foreman, mm -hmm. first time around. Um, they, they, I mean, the list goes on and on. I can give you names. That they were just mean people. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to hurt you. Like, the intention was to hurt you. I remember Mike Tyson, uh, he fought, uh, 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 what was his name? It was his Mitch first, Green? His first ABC fight. Was it Mitch Green? No. Okay. Jesse Ferguson? Jesse Ferguson. Mike Tyson was biting his lip <laughs> when he was throwing up because, I mean, not like, I'm talking, yeah. like, I'm going to kill yeah. you. And you have to have that nature when it comes to boxing. Hmm. Because it's not a nice man's sport. Nah. It's a sport of attrition and and your goal is to to literally render your opponent unconscious. And that's what I teach my guys to do. Yeah. I teach my guys to 
stop your opponent because if you stop them, you don't have to worry about the decision. Like you always say, you don't get no, you don't get paid overtime. You don't get paid overtime. On that same topic, Deontay Wilder's been getting a lot of flack from fans and media for his comments about wanting a body. There's a, okay, there's a difference. <laughs> I, I never said anything about killing. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to the stand with that. <laughs> It's not something that you say about what you're doing. Mm. I just want to know if you think fans and media are fickle because they love Mike Tyson for the exact same thing. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he would say things that were even way more out there. Well, but I never heard him say, I want to kill somebody. He said, I want to drive a... He know, said, I want to eat your kids. That's, that's, that's really stupid, though. You know, <laughs> you know what? No, I think Mike said some worse things. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, when you say, I want to catch a body. Yeah, I see what you, you know, mean by that. For those who don't know, I don't know if everybody here is from the streets. Yeah, we from the well, have some idea of the streets. Some of us are. In the neighborhood, <laughs> when you hear, oh, you know, somebody caught a body. Yeah. That's the worst thing you want to hear because you know somebody's been killed. Facts. So we don't want to hear that. Yeah. I, I don't care if you say, you know, I want to break him up or I want to knock him out or yeah. crack his head. What? Mike did say if he doesn't die, it doesn't count, though. Right, my <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, and I could be wrong because you know when I heard that man, I never had a problem with it just because I understood it to be his fighting mentality, and maybe you don't agree with that, but um, I didn't, you know, I didn't take it as he's walking day to day and he wants to catch a body. I was just like, that's how his fighting mentality is. No, no, I understand what you're saying, and and, and rightfully so, but there's a time and a place, okay. and especially if you know, all right, if I'm I'm walking around and I'm like. You know what? I want to see my guys. Excuse my expression, man. I want to see my guys knock this motherfucker out. Each, every fucking body got to get knocked the fuck out. How is that going to look? You know what that's going to do for me? They're going to be like, what is wrong with me? What happened to Dre? You know what What's wrong with What's all this hate coming from? I never knew he could speak like that. I mean, it's not good. So it, there's moments and times for everything. Gotcha. How much of this is about old Dakota, they say, in terms of you don't rap, you don't go to the cops, you don't run to... What is he answers. talking about? <laughs> what is he... When he went to the cops, that's breaking the code. All right. Oh, he was being... Well, you know what? I, I was... Understand. I, I understand. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Drake, go ahead. I was like, where's he going? <laughs> he pulled it back. Really yeah, yeah, he pulled the Brazil at the yeah. That, this is it. They had an altercation. Now, if you had an altercation and, and you're fighting and you, you're looking to fight this guy, you say, you know what, I'll handle this in the rest. I mean, the cop thing, maybe he was looking to get a lawsuit or something. You have to have a physical record to follow through on things of that nature. But it, it was a little... On, on that salty side. <laughs> really like, if I got a problem with you, and, and I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the genuine nice guy. But if I have a problem with you, and I'm really, really adamant about this problem, yeah. I'll be like, I'm walking outside the Barclays. Yeah. I'm going to go down Atlantic Avenue. I know you're going to come across the Washington. You're going to highlight each other, yeah. come across the Washington, <laughs> I will wear your hat. Facts. So, you know, basically... He threw himself in that position by yeah. that. So now he has to prove it tonight that he was ready to rock and roll. Yeah. We shall see. Just to heart back on Danny in 168, I mean, there's a really interesting fight there, I think. It's a rematch, and it's him versus Kid Chocolate. Kid Chocolate's about to fight for a title. He could be champ at 168. That'll make for a good narrative right there. Is that something you guys have even processed or thought of? Um, I, no, I haven't, but honestly, I think the... Um, the uh, outcome, another draw? Yeah. yeah. I think mm -hmm. the outcome <laughs> will pretty much be in the same vein. Mm -hmm. uh, he already fought him. He went and, and devastated him. And I like Kitchard. I don't want to see them fight again. Mm -hmm. I really don't. But if they were to, I think the uh, end result would be very similar. Even though, like, Kid at that time, I said he was super drained making 160. And, uh, well, you know, everybody has a... a Something to say. I would appreciate the first fighter who told me, you know what? I lost because I lost. Yeah. The guy was just better and that's it. No excuses. Don't carry me on the on the gravy train with an excuse. 
If you lost, you lost. Let's, let's do it. Let's, dro let's drop down some pounds from 168 to 135. Your guy, the IBF champ, Mr. Comey. How we looking with him? Richard Comey, he's in the crowd right now, actually. Mm -hmm. um, Richard is the most wonderful fighter anybody could ever have mm -hmm. as a fighter. He works harder than anybody that I've ever seen. He never has a complaint, and he wants to be special. God gave him a gift of incredible punching power. Mm -hmm. My job was to refine it and define it, make sure that he can articulate and land that and create those spectacular knockouts. And that's what I've been doing. He's a joy to work with. He will be fighting on uh, June 28th against Ray, Ray Beltran, Beltran, former champion, and, and, and 135. I, I tell you this, it's going to be a rough night for Ray Beltran. Got gotcha. you. A rough I, night. Sorry. Uh, what do you think about the eventual fight we were talking about with Tia Juma Lopez? Uh, listen, I'm looking forward to it. You have to realize Richard is a big lightweight. Richard is almost as tall as I am. Mm. He He... He makes 35, uh, fight night, he might be about 150, mm -hmm. filled out, looking like black steel, <laughs> and, and, he, and he punches like a horse kicks you. And you, you, you might ask for it, but sometimes you get what you ask for. Gotcha. And you didn't expect what you would get. Solid. I mean, how tough is it, Moku? Sorry. I know you've had, you've had differences with promoters, managers. They all say the same thing about Richard Combe. Okay, he's a great guy. Great fighter, boring as hell. People like flash. They like talking. That's why Teofimo Lopez right now is the most exciting flavor of boxing. That's why Conor McGregor makes millions and billions of dollars. Why you see even guys like Floyd Mayweather? They know how to talk. How much does it hurt you when you see a guy like Richard? He has all the tools, and yet he doesn't like tired trash talk. He doesn't like calling people out. He is just that proverbial: sign a contract, tell me the date, I'll show up. And that hurts him in the long run. But well, I don't think it hurts him because this last fight showed a lot of people what he's all about. I mean, you could talk all the way around the block. If you can't back it up, it makes no difference. Richard, Richard not only backed it up, but he destroyed his opponent when he won the title. Richard has really, really true punching power. Mm -hmm. And forget the talk. I want to see the action. Show me the knockout. Mm -hmm. You might not even have to say a word. George Foreman never said a word back in the first period of his boxing career. He just knocked you out. Rich is going to do the same. Okay. Would you say he's the hardest puncher in that division if Lomachenko fought him? Uh, it, absolutely. Absolutely. No, Lopez, no, none of them can punch as hard as Richie Coleman. None of them. Mm. None of them. Not one of them. I, I've worked with punches all my life. I've worked with Joe Green, Curtis hey, Stevens, mean Joe. Uh, uh, Marcus Brown, um, Duke McCott. Mm -hmm. These guys are they're natural punches. You, I, and, and from a training uh, perspective, when a guy can punch like these guys can, you know what the barometer is. You know where it's at. Richard is the biggest puncher in the lightweight division. If he lands a clean right hand on you, you're going to sleep. Let me ask you this, Dre. Coming off two back-to-back -back losses from 154 and 147, tough losses. Where did Saddam go in his career, Saddam Ali? I, I actually, I told Saddam that he needs to take a break. Um, I wasn't very happy with the way he was preparing. Mm -hmm for his last fight, and it showed. Listen, I love, Saddam is like my baby. Absolutely, yeah. And that night, I was, I was, I was like, I had an out-of-body experience mm -hmm. watching that fight, because I'm, I'm like, Who, what, what the hell is going on here? He got stopped in our corner. Mm -hmm. I was sitting right under him, and I said, Saddam, move, get out of here, move. Curtis was yelling at him, take a knee, Saddam, yes. shut the action down. He wouldn't do it. I just don't think at this point in time he wanted to box. So mm. We're going to give him a break, mm -hmm. let him do what he has to do, and, and sort of move on from there. Gotcha. What's your, uh, and, 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 uh, and bringing that into, into uh, perspective, 
we have Curtis Stevens fighting August 3rd. Yes. Here at the Barclays Center mm -hmm. at 154 pounds. We've been talking about Nice. It. I can honestly tell you, we all know Curtis is one of the biggest punches on the planet. Mm -hmm. We already know that. At 54, forget about it. Mm -hmm. Forget about it. So can he uh, get revenge for uh, Mungia, man? We're going after Mung okay. Mungia. I call him uh, Mungwagwa. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we're going to set up a few uh, direction fights. Okay. And get Curtis in position. Hopefully, sometime, if we can do it by the end of the year or mm -hmm. early 2020, I guarantee you, for everything I have, mm -hmm. and I guarantee you my Havoc uh, entity, mm -hmm. when they get in the ring, when Guagua is going to sleep, <laughs> he's going to sleep. Do you think he would even take that fight? Do you think Golden Boy would take well, the fight? Because Curtis is a, is a is a risk right now at 154. Of course, he, of course not, but we have to maneuver in the position to so make it happen. Gotcha, so gotcha. We'll get him the number one, and at that point in time, he's going to have to get in the ring with him. Gotcha. And when he gets in the ring with him, he has two directions he can take. One, he can run. Mm -hmm. We know he can't run because mm -hmm. he doesn't run. Yeah. Two, he can come to fight. If he comes to fight, he goes to sleep. Mm. If he comes to fight hard in the first round, the fight is over in 45 seconds. Gotcha. We switch gears to Chris Algeria. I'm really uh, looking forward to his fight with Corey. Uh, oh, yes. We've had a wonderful time training. You know how I am with my guys. You know, they, they uh, people must think I have 14 brothers and 25 sisters because <laughs> I got a million nephews. But Chris, Chris is one of my near and dear favorites. He's also a very hard worker. He works just as hard as anybody else, if not harder. And we've been working on him doing different things. You know, Chris is uh, he's, he's an all-out boxer. I've been, work, I've been working on him sitting down on some punches, working better to the body. And um, I think he's going to put on an exciting performance against Cord. Cord comes right to him. We're going to hit him with uppercuts and turn him, shoot shots, control him with the jab. And uh, this is a rarity. Chris says, I'm going to try to knock him out. Mm. I said, okay. I said, whatever you say. That is a rarity for Chris exactly. to say. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to the fight. I'm looking forward to Chris getting another title shot. And if anybody deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, it's Chris. We need to win another world title, mm -hmm. win a few more fights, and take him right on to Kennesota and, and get him in the House of Pain. I'm looking forward to Chris and Maurice fighting each other. Mm. What do you think about Maurice? I like him. He's blue collar, doesn't do anything special, but he's consistent. And consistency is a dangerous thing in a fight who wants mm -hmm. But um, we're going to work and I think uh, we'll have more than enough in our attack uh, chest to, to win and to have Chris become a two-time world champion. What are your thoughts on the 140-pound division itself? You got Maurice Hooker, the champ, Jose Ramirez, we just progressed. We, Today, Josh Taylor just dominated Ivan Barinchuk. Right. It, it, it's, you know. it's a wonderful division, but like at this point in time, being that my nephew is, is 35, I'm going to guide him correctly. Got you. You understand? He, he doesn't have to be in a, a war and a war and a war. Mm -hmm. No, we'll just work the lines and get him to the top, control it, find out what's the best uh, avenue economically and uh, career-wise and take it from there. Okay. Two more questions. First, so you bring, we bring, when we bring Jacobs, 